All right, so we are going to use a problem solving strategy. This entire unit is mostly word problems, and I know how much you love word problems. And I almost didn't make a video because everybody's so good at them. I'm kidding. Um, I will make a video. This is what this is about, and um, and I'm hoping that the most important thing that you do is you keep an open mind, and. Um, and you need to understand that nobody was born understanding this stuff. You have to practice at it. You have to work at it. And just watching me do these these questions on this video is not going to be enough. You're going to have to work some on your own and ask questions and get help and you know do everything that you need to do to be a good student. Because this doesn't come easy for anybody. <clears throat> but a lot of people are just willing to work through those problems and that's what you need to be willing to do too. Alright, so I really do love this little cartoon here of this girl. Um, <clears throat> she has a really bad attitude, obviously. Look at the look on her face. But um, a lot of people, whenever they see word problems, their first reaction is, I just can't do this. And... Um, let's see here, this one. This one's another one of my favorites. If I just skip all the word problems, I can probably still pass the class. That's true in a sense, but not fully. You're not going to get the grade that you want and um, if you pass it all. So my suggestion is work enough of these problems that you're not so intimidated by them anymore. Look at what a positive attitude can do to your face. Look how happy she is. I think I can. Whether you think you can or you can't, oops, here it is, right here. Oh, no, I don't guess I put it in there. Um, or maybe I did. There it is. No, I didn't. Okay, so anyways, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right either way. And that's a version of something that Henry Ford said a long, long time ago. But you have to have the positive attitude or you're never going to do this right. All right, so here's your strategy. You've actually seen this before. Every time I, sh I do word problems, I show you this. So, you know, don't scramble to write all of this down. Just kind of read through it and understand what it means. All right, so let's get into the meat and the bones of this section. Pilar bought a purse on sale for $18, which was one half of the original price. What was the original price of the purse? Okay, so we did step one. Step one said, read the problem. Now, step two, identify what you're looking for. What is it we're looking for? The original price of the purse. That's what we're looking for here. Step three, name what you're looking for. Okay, so we are going to let X equal the original price of purse. Step four, translate into an equation. All right, so I know that one half of x, one half times the original price, is eighteen dollars. Now it says solve and then check your answer and then it says answer the question with a complete sentence. I'm not so picky about the complete sentence, but I am very picky about you labeling your answer and what it means. Oops, wrong way. All right, so in order to solve this, you could divide both sides by one half, or you can multiply by two, same thing. Okay, so what does $36 mean here? It means $36 was the, oops, I forgot the word original. There we go. $36 was the original price of the purse. All right, so Ginny and her classmates formed a study group. The number of girls in the study group was three more than twice the number of boys. There were 11 girls in the study group. How many boys were in the study group? Always go to where that question mark is. What you're looking for is right in front of it. How many boys? So we are going to let X equal number of boys. Alright, so now it says 
the number of girls in the study group was three more, three more than twice the number of boys. Three more than twice the number of boys is number of girls. It says here there were 11 girls. So 3 plus 2x is equal to 11. Subtract 3. 2x is equal to 8. Divide by 2. x is equal to 4. What does 4 represent in this problem? There were four boys in the study group. All right, that's it for that one. So now we're going to talk about just a generic word problem. The difference of a number and six is 13. What does difference mean? Difference means subtraction. So the difference of a number of a number means x. Is means equals. So there's our equation. And now to solve for it, you add 6 to both sides. x is equal to 19. We don't really have a way to label this because we don't, there's no spe specifics on what this number is. It's just the number. So you don't really have to do anything else. I'm sorry, there's a big spider in here. Um, to, to solve this. Spider crisis diverted. He's dead now. Okay, so now on this one, the sum of twice a number and 7 is 15. Sum means add. Twice a number means 2x. Is means equals. Alright, so now we solve for x. Subtract 7 from both sides. and divide by 2. There we go. Alright, so one number is 5 more than another. The sum of the numbers is 21. Find the numbers. So we're going to let x equal the first number, and the second number is x plus 5. You could also say x minus 5. It, it would actually work here. So I've got x plus x plus 5. Remember, this right here is our first number. This right here is our second number. And the sum of those is 21. x is equal to 8. So now to find the other one, <clears throat> you have to take that 8 and you have to put it right here. Alright, so you get 8 plus 5, which is 13. So our two numbers that we're looking for are 8 and 13. Those are our two numbers. Now remember earlier whenever I said you could also use x minus 5? Well check this out. So if I let x be our first number, and I let x minus 5 be our second number. Watch this. x plus x minus 5. Remember this right here is our first number. This right here is our second number. And that equals 21. Whenever I combine my like terms, I get 2x minus 5 equals 21. Add 5 and I get 2x is equal to 26 divide by 2 x is equal to 13 then to find your other number you have to put that in right there so 13 minus 5 is 8 so you still come up with 8 and 13 either way alright so for this one 
The sum of two numbers is negative 14. One number is 4 less than the other. Find the numbers. So I'm going to let x equal my first number. And it says one number is 4 less than the other. And it says the sum is negative 14. So I've got x plus, that's my first number, x minus 4 is my second number, and their sum is negative 14. So now combine my like terms. I've got 2x minus 4 equals negative 14. Add 4. Divide by 2. So there's one of the numbers. Now to find the other number, I've got to take that and put it right there. So I've got negative 5 minus 4, which is negative 9. So my two numbers are negative 5 and negative 9. And if you look, those two added up, the sum of those two is negative 14. One number is 10 more than twice a number. Their sum is 1. Find the numbers. So I'm going to, let's see here, let x equal first number. And then 10 more than twice another. So 10 more than twice another is my second number. Their sum is 1. So I want the sum of this and this. So x plus 10 plus 2x equals 1. So now I've got 3x plus 10 equals 1. Subtract 10. So I've got 3x is equal to negative 9. Divide by 3. x is equal to negative 3. All right, so there's one of the numbers. Now how do I find the other one? I'm going to take this negative 3 and I'm going to put it in right there. So 10 plus 2 times negative 3. 10 minus 6 is 4. So my two numbers are 4 and negative 3. And if you think about it, is their sum 1? Yes, it is. Okay, so now we're going to talk about consecutive integers. Consecutive integers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, could be 47, 48, 49. Those are consecutive integers. And if you think about it, how do I get, if this were x, how do I get to 2? This is x plus 1. So then how would I get to 3? This would be x plus 2. How would I get to 4? This is x plus 3. So it says here, the sum of two consecutive integers is 47. So I let x equal my first integer. Now to get to my next consecutive integer, it's going to be x plus 1. And it says sum, so I've got x plus x plus 1 is equal to 47. Add your like terms, subtract 1 from both sides, divide by 2, x is equal to 23. Now how do I get my second one? I add 1 to it. So my two numbers are 23 and 24. Okay, so I want to remind you on this one, whenever we're talking about three consecutive integers, remember if you have one, oops, one, two, and three, and this was your x, you have to do x plus one to get here, and you have to do x plus two to get to the, your third number. So for this problem, we are going to let x be our first number, x plus one is our second number, and x plus 2 is our third number. And their sum is negative 42. So x is my first plus x plus 1 is my second plus x plus 2 is my third and their sum is negative 42. 
So now I'm going to combine my like terms. And I'm going to solve. Subtract 3. So I get 3x is equal to negative 45. Divide by 3. x is equal to negative 15. So now if I add 1, remember negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. Negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. So my three numbers are negative 13, negative 14, negative 15. And if you add those up, their sum is negative 42. Okay, so this one's a little bit different because we're talking about even integers. So find three consecutive even integers whose sum is 84. So if I'm talking about even integers, let's just pull these out of the air. 2, 4, and 6. Those are consecutive even integers. So if I consider this to be the first even integer, how do I get to 4? Well, I have to add 2 to get to 4. Now, how do, what do I have to do to x to get it to be 6? I have to add 4. So I'm going to let x be my first even integer. x plus 2 is my second even integer. And x plus 4 is my third even integer. And their sum is 84. So I've got x is my first one plus x plus 2 is my second even integer plus x plus 4 is my third even integer and their sum is 84. So now combine your like terms and subtract 6 from both sides divide both sides by 3 So 26 is my first one, and then I add 2 to that to get my next one. So 26 is my first. Add 2, I get 28. Add 4 to my first one, and I get 30. If you add them babies up, you get 84. All right, last problem. A married couple together earns $110,000 a year. The wife earns $16,000 less than twice what the husband earns. What does the husband earn? So we're going to let x equal the husband's earnings. And it says here, the wife earns 16000 less than twice what her husband. So twice what her husband earns minus 16000 is equal to Oh, whoops, hang on. I don't want to do that just yet. So this is equal to the wife's earnings. That's where I wanted to go next. So it says here, together they earn 110000 So this plus this equals 110000 So I've got x plus... 2x minus 16,000 equals 110,000. Now let's just combine our like terms. Add 16,000 to both sides. And I get 3x is equal to, what is that? and then divide both sides by 3. What does this mean? What does 42,000 mean? What does the husband earn? And right here we let x equal the husband's earnings. So 42,000 is the husband's earnings. 
All right, so that's it for this lesson. Keep trying, you guys. I know this is something that does not come naturally or easy, but if you keep at it, you will get better at these. I promise. Send me a message if you have any questions.